Excuse me, do you guys go to school at Stern? Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, one second. Do you have any thoughts on CEO pay? What do you think about consulting? Is it BS or do they actually add value to businesses? So we're doing a piece trying to get people's thoughts on consulting. Is consulting a legit business or is it just BS? It's legit. I interned there this summer and it was very legit. A few weeks ago, John Oliver on his HBO show Last Week Tonight engaged in an epic takedown of McKinsey and the consulting industry, where secretive companies like McKinsey charge exorbitant fees to their clients, usually Fortune 500 companies, for quote-unquote innovative advice. And Oliver's segment has garnered over 6 million views on YouTube so far. McKinsey's advice can be expensive but obvious, its predictions can be deeply flawed, and it's arguably helped supercharge economic inequality in this country, all of which is pretty striking, coming from a company whose leader you've already seen sum up its fundamental mission like this. Our purpose is to create positive, enduring change in the world. Yeah, but is it, though? Good question. So, I thought it might be interesting to hear from some potential aspiring future McKinsey consultants. We are at New York University's Stern School of Business, my alma mater, and we're hopefully gonna to talk to some students about McKinsey, which approximately 30% of the student population wants to work at. That is true. In fact, I may have even underestimated that a little bit. Because according to NYU's latest MBA employment report, almost 40% of the graduating class went to work for a consulting firm with an average starting salary of nearly $170,000 per year, along with a 30K signing bonus. What do you think about consulting? Is it BS or do they actually add value to businesses? I think the, the correct answer for me would be for my future, I think, yeah, it provides real value. Yeah, no, I mean, I've also had like interviews and I've been a little bit on the inside and know a lot of people that, that you know, have worked in these firms. So they probably are adding value to businesses. I mean, when you go to McKinsey, with a business issue that you're looking to address, they're more than, they're gonna be likely to um, solve it in some capacity, but there's a chance that they're not accounting for like what people feel on the inside. How good does a business really need to be? I mean, if they're not afloat, but doing well and creating, you know, revenue and profits for their stakeholders, what's the, is, does he, do you need to go to the next level to, and then have to, you know, cut a bunch of employees? It'd be nicer if someone from McKinsey works on the inside of a company and actually, um, put skin in the game. They, they do provide like some some consultation advice that's like does seem like common sense but i think there's a lot more that goes into it um and based off like the the casing and all the consult consulting stuff that i've been doing there's a lot that goes into it a lot more than people think so i think that's important to keep in mind john oliver he also highlighted how mckinsey has spearheaded the extreme rise in executive compensation that we've seen in the last 60 years so there is one area where McKinsey has historically advised the exact opposite of cost cutting, and that is executive pay. Starting in 1950, a consultant of theirs named Arch Patton started advising corporate leaders that they were underpaid, writing books like Men, Money and Motivation, Executive Compensation as an Instrument of Leadership. His advice was so wildly popular that for a time, Patton personally accounted for almost 10% of the firm's billings and later came to be seen as a major contributor to skyrocketing executive pay. What do you think about CEO pay? Is it too much, too little, just the right amount? I wouldn't know, I'm not a CEO. Right? <laughs> Guess it depends on how much they want, how much they need. <laughs> I think it's it's probably on a per person basis too because the amount of uh, you know work that they put in, the amount of hours, I know those jobs are taxing. Well, the market does decide. You know, no one's gonna pay 300 times uh 300 x you know a salary for a ceo if the market doesn't demand for it yeah i think they do get paid too much but a lot of their compensation are tied with their stock performance right so if they're getting paid more than i guess shareholders are also beneficiaries so yeah i guess yeah. it's good for everyone except if you're not shareholders <laughs> for the company then I guess you're missing out. The fact of the matter is if you work at McKinsey, that's kind of a springboard into a very great career. There's a lot of well-to-do people like CEO of Google, Pete Buttigieg, all these guys that come from McKinsey. Are you comfortable, let's say, working within an industry that maybe does some unscrupulous things, but it's gonna really help your career? Or is it unfair to ask people that to say, you need to be morally right all the time? It's very hard to say, right? But I guess as long as it's within the law boundaries. I don't believe that the the, the consulting industry is evil. I think that it is a good springboard if you want to put yourself and surround yourself by, you know, 
top minds, people who've been exposed to the highest level of transactions and the highest level of policy and and also just be in the kind of reaching distance of real policy makers and real change makers. It's it's totally legitimate to go to these firms. For me, I'll just follow my heart. Like if I think this is right, then I'm going to do it. If I don't think it's right, it's not comfortable for me, I'll probably pass on it. You know, there's better ways to make money than just going against your morals and, you know, make make money from that. Yeah, are there any red lines you think in terms of like let's say McKinsey works for the Saudi government, questionable human rights or regulatory gray areas such as consulting for the FDA at the same time they're consulting for a pharmaceutical company. That's the market because the the size of McKinsey is the size of the market. So in terms of red lines, like it's just more like everyone loves to see transparency and everyone loves to see kind of a value judgment. Personally, I'm not huge on like government, tons of government intervention. So it's just kind of what the market created. There should be more regulations, but also not everyone finance guy is is a is a you know Ponzi scheme runner. So I would say like there's definitely a lot of bias from outside of Stern. You know, just talk to more Stern people. I think they're nice. They're nice people. I don't doubt that I'm one of them. But what business school students were willing to share, I think pales in comparison to what they were not willing to share. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, one second. We're part of a news organization called Breaking Points. Are you okay with us using that footage? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Okay. If you have an opinion, but I don't think it's something I would be okay with. I'm sorry. I don't want to be caught on, on camera. You don't want to be caught on camera, is that right? Sorry, sorry, yet. Um, I'm going to decline, but thank you. Very difficult to, to get people to speak since they have a, a lot to lose. Yeah, think about it. There's a lot of stu there's student loans, uh, $200,000 in student loans, and then you have to get a job, they, you know, or else you can't pay it back. I, I did my best, but truly, there is no, at the very least, no financial upside in talking to me, so I can't really blame them for prioritizing their self-interest. Truth is, modern corporations only love superficial diversity, what you look like, your sexual orientation, things like that. But they do not love diversity and thought. And this principle applies before you get the job and while you're on the job. And I think that's why you see so many unscrupulous business practices or personal misconduct go unchallenged. Your company is doing something shady? Tunnel vision. You say nothing. Maybe a coworker is getting harassed by a boss. Unless it's really egregious, probably best just look the other way and also say nothing for risk of you also becoming a potential cultural pariah yourself in the eyes of the company. Look, I'm not here to be the morality police, and despite some of the, uh, the cringe posts that you'll see on LinkedIn, some crap like this about helping the environment or whatever, the uncomfortable truth is that corporations can't really be anything more than a platform or a vehicle to help you build economic security for you and your family, and unfortunately, as we all know today, that does come with tremendous societal cost. That's it for me this week. Let us know what you think. Also, if you enjoyed the segment, you can support my work by going over and subscribing to my YouTube channel, 5149 with James Lee. The link will be in the description below. Your support would mean a lot to me. Of course, keep on tuning into Breaking Points and thank you for your time today. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.